What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bailcast. Excuse me while I drink my clear protein because I got to get my protein in because I just finished training. Oh, nice. And a huge shout out to our sponsors. It's uh, ShipStation, Audible, Audible, and Third Love. Third Love. And don't forget our very own Barbell Bar Brigade. Bell. Yep. And today, uh, one of the comments that I read that you guys wanted us to talk about is making friends and making connections. And I think that's a really relevant topic because um, with social media, although it's been able to connect so many more people in, in a much greater way, it's also created a lot of recluseness from what I've been told. Oh, really? Who's telling you these things? Uh, just my own personal scientific observations with my two eyes. So then <laughs> you're the person that told you is yourself? Well, I think just being my own assumer, like I assume things and then I tell myself and then I'm, I go, okay, I told myself this. That's cute. Um, so. Okay. So like our friends, kids, a lot of them don't go out to play anymore. A lot of them, they just go online and they try to connect online. What but kids? if someone has, oh, I a, see what kids. but yep. if someone has a, a connection issue or whatever, like it, it's a, it's a, it's a different way of making friends now. And it almost seems like a lot of people too, that we hear when they talk to chicks, without DMing, they don't even know or have the confidence to talk to someone in real life. They need to resort back to text and, and build the relationship up there, which is so very non-human. Is it? Damn. So I, I'm, I'm like in this weird space and I think you grew up around the same time I did. I don't know why I decided to wear earrings today because we're wearing these headphones and it's pulling on my ears and I have like this phobia that uh, my ear, my earring is going to pull my ear hole out and rip it and yeah. it freaks me. It's like so irrational, but it freaks me out. Okay, cool. They're out. Um, I've been my, I have had my ear mean pulled out and it's not that bad. Ugh, okay, I don't want to think about it. I came back uh, when I was 15, I got my ears pierced and my dad says, what the <gasps> hell is that? And he grabbed and yanked it out. Shut up. Yeah. I, my mom said shit like that. Or if you get a tattoo, I'm going to burn that shit off. But it's always talk. Asian parents are a promise. Okay, another thing I've learned about you, you keep going Asian this, Asian parents this, and then time and time again, you're just generalizing like a motherfucker. And then people that are in Asia, uh, they're like, that's not true, man. Well, duh, because they're Asia. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, okay, the Asian I'm talking about are the ones- It's just your parents. Are the refugees yeah. and the immigrants that came here. Yeah. Like, you ever been down to, like, little Tokyo and you eat, like, ramen? You're like, why does this place suck? Was well, because they brought back the 1980s recipe and they've never developed since then. And you yeah. go to Japan, they got some new school shit where it's solar powered bowls or something, right? Yeah. And it's oh, because tight. they've been able to evolve. I came up with that off the top of my head. I'm freaking just smart. So they've been able to but evolve. But not smart enough to put chapstick on with your white ass. I know. Lips. I know shit's cracking <laughs> as I'm talking. <laughs> I look at it. I'm like, oh. I'll do the licking technique. Oh, God. But, um. <laughs> Uh, but then they've been, been able to evolve. So you know how in Japan, like a lot of people, because they've removed it out of the history books, yep. they don't even know the heinous crimes that their country did in yep. World War II. Yep. So the whole J J Japan Korean beef, it actually just exists, exists in the States. So those are the Asians I'm talking about. Those guys that have carried the old school ass beating virtues, <laughs> they brought it into the States yeah. and they've kept it there. The fucking, the, the gentle Asians back home, I'm not talking about those guys. Fine. Like Steve says, it's it's an Asian thing. It's, it's, a, it's a very Asian thing. Okay. Um, but kind of going back to what you were talking about, uh, about the people that told you that ultimately was yourself that told you. Um, I am, like I was saying, in this weird space where... I grew up really strict. I didn't have what's going on. You're making me self-conscious. Now, now I'm going to lick my lips more. Yeah, please. You're fucking going to rip that shit. You're going to get blood everywhere. Um, but I, I I grew up in an, in a time where the internet was just getting introduced and released to the public. And like um, that's when I started learning about like chat rooms and stuff. And I thought that was really, really cool. But because I was so isolated, I couldn't go like when it wasn't, when it was school hours were over, I'm at home stuck in my room. All I have is a landline. And at home, we didn't have internet yet. It was at my mom's work. So when I was at my mom's work, I was like, cool, I can have friends that are outside of school. So I thought that for me was really, really cool. So I don't know if like um, that messed me up in terms of like 
the connections I make with people or not, or if it was the fact that I was so isolated that I'm just like socially awkward. Um, you know, what's crazy though, is our generation, there's a lot of distrust with internet. So most of the people, our generation, when we first created screen names, everyone's like, Ooh, I don't know. Not using my real yeah, name. Not using my real name. It's some sexy girl 55 or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, when you created it, were you using your real name? No. So the people that you're making connections with online, they're not even real connections. Yeah, true. I guess that's true. Yeah, because I didn't, I'd never met up with any single person. Yeah. And then when I started really making a connection that I still didn't meet in person was like MySpace time. Yeah. And then I made the connection because I'm like, oh, okay, I see your real face. Um, I think it's your real face. Yeah. And, and then like, okay, we're friends. We have like, you know, you can put music on there. I'm like, oh, we like the same music. Oh, we like the same bands. So I was making connections that way. Yeah. Um, But... But yeah, I, I don't know if I fall in this in that weird space where like I'm like I don't know. Like, but but nowadays people are completely honest, or a lot a lot of people are very honest online, very yeah. transparent. They show pictures of their parents, their dogs, you know, their friends. Yeah. And so I think the way that they put them out there, it's they are trying to reach more of a connection, and yeah. it's easy for people to go, "Oh, you like anime? I like anime too." Yeah. But. Um, but it seems like from my own, what people have been telling me, which is my eyeballs You're, telling me. Yeah, that's crazy. Is that a lot of people are, um, they're more recluse though. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I can't say that I, that I would agree with that. I don't know if they're more recluse. I just think that um, back in the day, back in my time, it's like you go and you hang out with people. And then at that point you realize, okay, this person's not for me. And you kind of start weeding it out. So your circle that started out this big, slowly becomes like this big and you have like five friends yeah. that are like your true homies. Yeah. Now I feel like you kind of can weed all that out because now you know, oh, you like anime. I like anime too. Well, what kind of anime? So you can do all the screening process and now it's like, okay, uh, all the screening happened before we met. Now we can go and do shit that we're both interested in. So I don't know if it's more recluse. I just think that they just skip that whole bullshit of like hanging out and wasting your time with people that, that you're not really going to gel with. Do you think connections need to be made uh, physically? I don't, um, I don't know if they, at some point I think they do. I think that they have to be made, uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Cause like there's all these, we don't see that many kids like playing in the neighborhoods now. Yeah, that's so weird to me. So those are also what people have been telling me. Just Your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, okay. like I, my eyeballs don't see that many kids playing in neighborhoods. Yeah. Whereas where I grew up, even the same exact city that I grew up in Cerritos. Yeah. Back in the day, like you just roll up and then there's kids riding bikes all over the place. There's basketball courts. People are playing full court basketball court across yeah. the street. There's a lot of things going on. Street hockey. Yeah. I don't really see that. Um, in our current house, we do see that because it's a little gated community, which is really yeah. cool and it makes me happy. But I rarely see that. I agree. Yeah, because we were, we were looking for a house for like two years and we were going to every single possible neighborhood and every street in that neighborhood trying to find our forever home. Yeah, we and did our yeah. research with our own eyes. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree. Like, there was no one ever outside. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? What kind of ghost town is this? Like, people live here because I see cars parked outside, Yeah. but I don't see people. Yeah, because people are making friends and connections online. Yeah, well, I guess um, the question that's being asked that for me, I would want some insight on too. Yeah. Is just how do you make these connections and how do you make them last? Um, because for me, because I was so removed from my neighborhood because it was a bad neighborhood, my parents didn't want me affiliating with, I guess, just the people that were there because they were like selling drugs or yeah. like you can keep it just real. doing bad the stuff. Scum, the scum of the streets. Yeah, like the the ghetto folk. Yeah, you know, my mom didn't want me to the get influenced. Trees. Yeah, by all those uh, scoundrels. Yeah, my mom didn't want me to get influenced by that, so she removed me from that. The swine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the dirty <laughs> swines. Yeah, yeah. So um, I f I never felt like I knew how to make a connection. Like I feel like you had you have deeper connections with your friends because you you still talk to a lot of them or a handful of them from back in the day. Yeah. Whereas for me, I'm just so quick to be like, okay, uh, moving on. You know, ironically though, um, I don't know if it's because of uh, my broken home, um, but I've never been able to keep a best friend for more than I think like four or five years. But Joe's your best friend. He's the only one. And David's your best friend. 
those are the only one and and you are the only one i don't know if i have attachment issues or something mm. so if we go down memory lane yeah um my first best friend that i can remember was uh this hispanic kid that taught me how to skateboard when i was like three or four because i lived in gardena i lived there for probably less than a year or two and then i moved to cerritos then my first best friend is my friend mark i always tell you about so he's like this half white half chinese kid that lived across the street very americanized super supportive family the type of family i wish i had they went to baseball games they played hockey like the parents they all had bikes like they all did everything together as a family it was super cool <laughs> i like that that's how you classify that they're a family <laughs> they all had bikes like that's legit though <laughs> well then it's because like asian style or not just asian but a lot of style <laughs> there we go okay god no, damn it a lot of style is it's like, an asian thing oh you want bike i can buy you bike get out of my face yeah you know but for them they're like oh you like bikes why don't we all get one and then so the whole family had one i remember his dad had a bike yeah his little sister was on that little thing like we had like taika had that's where even yeah. i got the idea from his older brother eric had a bike and the mom had a bike and they would all you know what? ride together newsflash uh my mom had a bike my dad had a bike my sister my brother and myself we all had bikes. And how many times have you guys ridden together? Never. Exactly. That's <laughs> but we what I'm all talking had about. bikes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We talked about it a lot. That's what I'm talking about. They're not, they don't talk. They just do it. Yeah. Their whole the mom had rollerblades. Everyone had rollerblades. They yeah. all played street hockey together. The mom played like a pussy because she's a little woman. But uh, whoa, 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 whoa. But she still participated, which is what I thought was fucking dope. It's not because she's a woman. It's probably just because she sucked. She probably did suck. She sucked and she was peaceful about it, but. The, what made me happy was instead of being on the sidelines, yeah. she was in it. Yeah. Which I thought was so fucking dope. Yeah. That's fucking, that is fucking dope and that's fucking cute. Um, and I hope that we can do the same thing with Taika. Yeah. But we might both have attachment issues. Cause oh, I, I didn't even finish. Oh, so oh, yeah. You got caught up and you got fucking, yeah. you were longing for a family like Mark's. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember this one time the ice cream truck came. I didn't have money and the dad bought me ice cream too. Fuck, I got to get you some chapstick. So go talk about your story. I'm going to dig through my backpack to get you some chapstick. Are you going to be listening? Yeah, 100%. Okay. And then so me and Mark, um, for some reason, we went our separate ways. I don't know if, well, I didn't even move. I don't know if it's because uh, I ended up getting kicked out of school and I had to go to the private school across the street because me and him still lived across the street from each other. Yeah. So I don't know how we kind of split. Putting on the chapstick, thank God. And then, um, and then I think uh, by the time I got kicked out of that private school, I went to a school named Whitman Elementary in Cerritos. And at that time, my best friend was this guy named Marquise, this Filipino dude. And so, um, and then we were good friends for maybe only two years. But I slept over; he slept over a lot, and that's when I got all my like Filipino insight. I would see like twelve grandmas in one house. And that was super cool. Like uh, their master bedroom, they're so family oriented. Their master bedroom, uh, their parents actually live in another room just so their master bedroom could be all grandparents and then just all the kids. How do they have so many grandparents? Filipinos, I don't know. They do they do, they do it differently. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They're very family oriented. You go in there and there's 12 grandmas cooking bacon. It's, they're all cooking the same thing. They're all cooking <laughs> what bacon. What the fuck, Filipinos? <laughs> and then my homie had like four stepdads. That shit was crazy. <laughs> I think it was just his family, dude. No. It's just, <laughs> they make all kinds of wild decisions. That shit was crazy. <laughs> it sounds crazy as fuck. All fucking four stepdads and all bacon all day. Yeah, and they're hella good at basketball. All the stepdads were. <laughs> what the fuck? It was nuts. Shout out to Marquise. <laughs> and then I went to uh, junior high. I was kind of, I kind of, I was kind of like a loner. Cause you know, I was telling you, I was supposed to go to this, this track to go to this school, but instead my mom wanted to put me in this school cause it was better. And then I met my other buddy named uh, Solomon Kim, who I always tell and tell David, I have a best friend that was like five, 10, 200 pounds when I was a little dude and it looked, looked, looked like Robin big. And then, uh, we ended up not being friends. I had an Indian best friend with Mark. So like, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was, um, because I came from a broken home and I moved so much already that I was never able to like maintain or keep a friendship for that long. But now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, nice segue. Now, now it's time to go to our first sponsor and we'll get right back to it Yeah. right after. And our first sponsor is ShipStation. So this is super cool because I know there's a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs out there. And um, when you're building your business, Usually people start very creatively, right? Like, oh, I want to do this. I want to make lemonade taste like grapes or something like that. Oh, bomb. So you, you, you have a dope idea. When you jump into the business, all of a sudden you got to fill out this paperwork. You're like, what the hell's an LLC? And then you got to do all this background 
fulfillment stuff and you're like oh there's all this part of the business that's not fun and by fulfillment you mean like shipping, shipping out whatever it. you're selling yeah which is exactly why and for stocking. barbell barbell brigade we um we outsource our shipping we won't even want to deal with managing a warehouse cleaning it getting getting rid of cockroaches and all that stuff so we deal <laughs> with uh we outsource all that <laughs> so it's so funny i don't know just your mind works so interestingly <laughs> There's cockroaches in warehouses. You Absolutely. Know that, right? You're hundred percent right. But it's just not one of the things that I would worry about, but go for it. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, what I wish we had when we first started out was, is a ship station. So ship station is a, uh, Sh online shipping service and it can help you get your orders out quickly and you save money and what's super cool about this is you can have multiple marketplaces connected to it so if you have your site or if you have an amazon or if you have an etsy or you sell on a bunch of different marketplaces you can combine all of them into one simple interface that you can even manage on your phone, oh, which is next level because being able to travel, go with your family and be able to still check up on your business is super key. Like when I'm traveling, like our recent Japan trip, I'm still checking up on how barbells doing and looking at the stats and all that. So that's super key. And then if you're able to have something that streamlines your entire back end process, which is what ship station does. You get to focus more on trying to make lemonade taste, not like lemonade, like grapes or whatever. Yep. So right now, uh, Bearcast listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use promo code BAW. That's B-E-A-W. And this is the super awesome part. There's absolutely no risk. And you can start your free trial without even entering your credit card. Most free trials for even porno, you have to put your credit card in. But for this one, you don't. And I don't even know because I've never even had a uh, porno membership. Do you believe me? Mm, I guess I have to. Yeah, I've, I've, never, I've never had it. Uh, so go to <laughs> ShipStation.com, segueing back to fulfillment and the creative part of business and away from erotica. Uh, type in Bell, B-E-A-W, and that's the promo code B-E-A-W, ShipStation.com and streamline all the parts of business that don't tickle your pickle and focus on the stuff that- uh, Tickles your pickle. That tickles your pickle and that's how you can have longevity in business. That's my number one advice. Yep. That's some good advice. So going back to your attachment issues. Yeah, so I've never had, uh, I've never had been able to keep friends for that long, like legit, like you know when people are like, oh, it's my best friend from first grade. And I'm like, wow, how did you do that? That I, is amazing. I've never been able to do that until I've met uh, Joe, and then until I've met you, and I don't know if it's because I've been consciously trying to work at it, or um, I've just matured as a person, and I don't have those issues anymore. What's <laughs> now your name? lips are too shiny. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and then you try it like it seems like you have lipstick on because it seems like you don't want your lips to brush up against your teeth. Yeah. So you like you like you're like a little bit more pouty so you're like talking and now they're all shiny and like God. luscious and stuff and i'm like damn it i can't focus on the words that See are coming why I have out of attachment his glossy issues because i have people like <laughs> you roasting me all day i'm not roasting you I just said they're shiny oh, fine. um but yeah i i i would agree with you that i've kind of am in a similar place you, you know? never had a held a best friend for a long period of time no i never have um and it i don't know where it comes from um maybe at some point, you know, my mom would always tell me like, uh, your best friend is going to be your mom, you know, like not to say that she wanted to be my best friend, That's but the she, biggest pile of shit I ever heard. But she was just saying stuff like you really can't trust people. Like people will turn on you for shit. I can't even trust my mom. You could trust your mom. What are you talking about? So there's your like, mom is down as fuck. There's big trust and there's little trust. I can't little trust my mom. Why you gotta mom. make everything so fucking cute with your glossy ass lips? <laughs> I can't little trust her. Why? Cause she's a fucking bullshitter, that's why. I don't know, I could trust but you. big trust, like I'm like, yo mom, sell your fucking house, I need that money right now, she'll do it like that. I got big trust from her. Yeah, why but, do you need little trust though? But if I'm like- Big trust I feel like is way more important. But if I'm like, hey mom, can you tell me like three things that dad uh, was good at, at being a dad? She'd be like, I don't can't even think of one thing. Oh, because so she yeah, hates them. Just little trust. Like there's like there's like a lot of childhood stories. I'm trying to tell her to keep it real. Yeah. And she sugarcoats it. Like she's done a lot to backstab me in the little trust area. But the big trust, she got my back 100%. All right. Yeah. So for me, th that was one thing that my mom would always instill, you know, like you can't really trust people because they're just going to turn on you. Yeah. Um. Maybe that's why I don't, I didn't have that many friends. She got problems. 
we all got problems, right? Yeah. Um, Hurt a little bit more, though. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Mom, if you're listening, I'm trying to have your back here, all right? She doesn't know how to use this shit. <laughs> <laughs> True. She doesn't even know what a podcast is. Um, yeah. So uh, I had a best friend in elementary school. Shout out to Michelle Stu. And then she went to another school. And then I'm like, okay, well, there goes that. Like, well, I don't know how we're going to talk. And then I had another friend, Tammy, in uh, junior high. Yeah. And then I went to high school and I'm like, man, she's kind of, she's not part of the cool people. You know, she was like really studious and like her parents were just as strict as mine, but she looked, I mean, she just, she's an Asian chick. So she looked like she was younger than what she really was. And she yeah. dressed really young and yeah. she was like into Hello Kitty and like would kind of just dress like a kid. And I wanted to see more like an adult, yeah, you know, like in more, high school. More grown up. Yeah. I wanted to be more mature. I wanted to like smoke weed and I wanted to be all cool and stuff. And I'm like, eh, I can't hang out with this person. And then um, in high school, all my best friends at that time, I had like three of them, um, they all just kind of lived a way different lifestyle than I did. Their priorities were completely different. Like they wanted to party. And I wanted to party too, but I just couldn't. So I had to shift my wants into a different space. So then I got into sports. I got, you know, I, I was off to a better track, if you will. And then I was going to college and then a couple of them got pregnant. And like, it was just... It was all bad. So I was quick to just like peace out, you know, but I think someone with a healthy, a healthy uh, attachment would be like, okay, well, they're not for me, but why does their life have to influence mine? Like we can still make it work. Like yeah. someone like Joe who has friends since he was probably in kindergarten or someone like Timothy Delaghetto, you know, like he's had friends for, I don't know how many like years. His whole crew, PD Flo, yeah. Eric, yeah. Ricky. Over 10, 10 plus years, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, like something that I don't, I have no idea. You put a lot of them on too. Yeah. I have no idea because for me, right? Like we will see ourselves and we think like, oh, okay, well we're not the problem. So for me, I always tried to be blunt and honest. Um, and, and, and I'm like, okay, well I'm giving I'm showing you my asshole. Like show me your asshole. Yeah. And, and at times I felt like I didn't get the asshole shown. So I'm like, oh, okay, we're not showing each other our assholes. Okay. Well, I'm going to go find someone that shows me their asshole. And I'm not trying to do it in a, in a conniving or fucked up way. Like this is all happening subconsciously yeah. where I'm like, okay, I'm trying to make this connection. And maybe it's because I'm trying to make the connection my way. And because it's not working my way, then like, I just naturally start like kind of gravitating towards a different direction. Yeah. I think that's what happened with me too. Like my, the last best friend I had before Joe's name's Chris. And he's the guy that I and, uh, got the same tattoo on my shin with. Fear everyone. Fear everyone. Um, I think that's kind of what happened too. Like I, I became best friends with him towards the latter end of high school. So we're more mature. And, um, I think like the same, the qualities that I liked in him, uh, started to be overshadowed by a lot of the qualities I didn't like in him. But instead of like talking about it or being proactive and putting effort into, um, uh, maybe even putting differences aside, like we don't have to change each other, but maybe putting differences aside and still being able to connect on that best friend level. Yeah. Um, I didn't really put in that effort. Yeah. And maybe I should have. Yeah. Maybe I should have done, done that with all my friends instead of just letting things like, like a haphazardly happen. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot of, I have to accept at least 50% of the responsibility for not being proactive when I can feel the relationship starting to dwindle. Like, yeah, to dwindle. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. But for now, we should pause because yeah. I have something to add to that, but we should pause for, for the our next second sponsor. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Just to let you guys know, having these sponsors are awesome because it makes these podcasts possible. Possible, yeah. yeah. So the second one is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a place where you can listen to audiobooks. And uh, for those of you guys who are pretty busy, or if you live in a shitty ass commuter city like LA, like me, uh, most of your time is taken up by driving. Yep. So uh, currently it is illegal to read while you're driving. I hope that that changes soon. Yeah. I'm trying to read. Me too. I'm trying to just <laughs> print it on my windshield so I don't have to drive. Yeah. Uh, so the easiest way to get caught up on knowledge, to educate yourself is through audiobooks, And you can even do it when you're running. Like actually for me, when I'm running, I prefer audiobooks and podcasts now way over music. 
because I can get over the run way faster and I'm just learning in the field. I'm just listening to a conversation. So um, on Audible, um, one of the books that I really, really, really like, it's called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And uh, it's applied mainly towards business, but I feel like it's works really good for your own life too. So Start With Why means um, a lot of people, they actually start with what? So they go, oh, you know what? I want to be a doctor. And he makes you examine, but why? Because when you chase the what and you don't know why, even if you achieve the what, like let's say you make $2 billion, you're still going to be empty inside. But if you know why you're doing something, even if you don't achieve the what, as long as you're continuously hitting the why, and you're going to love the journey because that's the reason why you're doing it. And so that book is awesome. It's changed my life uh, in the way that I view business and also the way I view my own personal hustle. And so right now there's a 30 day audible trial for all the Bailcast listeners. Go to audible.com slash bail, B-E-A-W or text bail, B-E-A-W to 500-500. And so I would go there right now and just listen to a bunch of stuff. Uh, There's things from... Rachel Hollis, David Goggins, Mel Robbins. These are all people that are really good with self-help. I know a lot of people, it's like there's a big self-help trend right now where people like they want to improve themselves and there's all these mentors that are available to you online. Whereas before you only have your big brother or your that one random uncle that was really successful. Now you have a lot of people you can look up to and they all have books that talk about the huge struggles they've had, especially like someone like David Goggins who was a former Navy SEAL that went to Ranger school. So that's a 30 day audible trial. Go to audible.com slash bail or text bail 500 500 and you have a 30 day trial. Yeah. And just to kind of step in real quick, um, audible has like the hugest selection of titles that you can find there. And it's not just all business related. There's fiction, there's nonfiction, um, so just go in there, have a good time. And, and yeah, it's, it's not just business books. They even got sexy, sexy books. They do. So yeah, hit them up. Uh, you have nothing to lose. Audible. I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, audible.com. Um, what I wanted to add, uh, in respect to what you were just saying about the connections and stuff and how it's kind of 50% your responsibility, why it failed or it didn't, it didn't stay. I think someone that's really good at that and has really healthy relationships that I've seen is, is Tiff. So yeah, Mm. Tiff. So, um, she's, she's what I would consider one of my best friends. Yeah. And, um, uh, I want to say maybe last year she was, she was like, we didn't really get to hang out too much. You know, I was kind of going through my depression or whatever you want to call that. Um, and I had a new baby and she was, you know, busy with her life and, and building, you know, her and Casey's empire and stuff. And we didn't really get to hang out that much. We didn't get to hang out. We weren't really talking too much. The only times we would see each other was when we were filming for JK party or JK news. And, um, she would hang out more with like Gina and like all my friends, no bad blood at all. And, um, I was like, Oh, cool. Like, like Tiff is hanging out with, you know, uh, people that are more like, like her, like really girly. And like, I'm not that girly. So a lot of the events and stuff that, 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 that they would go to, it's not really my thing, but I would have gone, you know, because Tiff's my friend and that's what she's interested in. And I'm like, cool, let's just do that. But when I saw that she was doing it with other people, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like they, they seem like they fit more as friends anyway. And that's where my mind went instead of going like, um, oh man, I should support my friend or I should hang out with her. Why haven't I talked to her? Why haven't I hung out? Like my mind didn't go there. My mind was more like, oh yeah, they seem like a better connection of friends than her and I, Mm. which is weird, right? And then, so she started kind of feeling this like, that's also kind of healthy too though, to let people be able to breathe a little bit. For sure, absolutely, yeah. Cause it's like, I know in junior high, people are like, that's my best friend. Like you're not supposed to have other friends outside of me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or they always want to be included or at least invited to whatever the hell's going on too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also weird for me. Like what, you didn't invite me? Like, come on, bro. Like I got a life outside of this. Um, But she started feeling that there was like this separation happening. So then for me, I justified the separation by going, oh, cool. She's clicking with other people. Tight, let that happen. And me going, oh, um, we're pretty different anyway. Yeah, I can see why that's happening. Cool. And I, I like I was already kind of letting go of that, mm. that best friend title and just treating it as like, okay, now we're just going to be cool friends and we're all going to be like the same cool friends. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So then when she started feeling that, she like, 
she was like, hey, can we like grab dinner or something? And I'm like, yeah, dude, let's let's do it. And then she brought it up and she was like, hey, like, I don't know what's going on between us, but like, we're not as tight as we used to be. That's like, awesome. I don't know what's going on. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's fucking awesome. And I think that's what contributes to that long lasting friendship, you know? Like you check in and you're just like, hey, what's going on? Like, like are you mad at me? Or or why aren't we hanging out as much as we, we should be? You know, not to say we need to hang out like 24 seven, but just like check in you know, from time to time, especially if you're a best friend, like you should be sending each other dumb shit all the time, you know? And I was like, oh shit, this is tight. This is what people with long lasting friendships do. You know, cause for me, like, like if we're friends, right? And we were hanging out all the time and then we don't, but then you just like randomly hit me up and you wanna hang out. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, let's do that. But um, I don't know if that would deepen it more. I you know? feel like um, for best friends to actually be best friends, there's got to be a level of burden too. Because mm. I remember, uh, I think me and Joe grew a little bit apart too. Um, probably like the last, not this year, this year got better, but maybe the last, uh, maybe 2015, 2016. And we're really hustling really hard. You know, like during, during those days, we're shooting like 40 articles on JK News days. JK Party was full blast. We were even doing Ask the Feels for a little bit, hanging with JK. There's just so much, so many things going crazy that uh, we were already dealing with so many business problems that when it came to personal, we didn't want to burden each other. Yeah. But I think when you don't do that, that's the way of checking in, you know? Yeah. Like when you're like, hey man, like me and my girl aren't doing so good, or like, damn, my car, or even like, you know how we 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 avoid burden so much to the point where we're like, Hey, we'll just get our own Uber if we need to go to the airport. Yeah. But I think friends are supposed to lean on each other and they're supposed to like, hey, can you pick me up at 4 30 a.m. and take me to the airport? And there's yeah. like a certain bond. But we end up like kind of carving out all the burdens and then now the relationship you have becomes very sterile. Yeah. Cause I felt I felt like I felt that with Joe for a little bit too, where it's like, yeah, obviously he got my back no matter what, I got his back no matter what. But our relationship became very, very sterile and it was just this this gold standard that we have. You get my back, I get your back. Yeah, because of the years of work that you guys put in towards yeah. that friendship. But there's not the like the daily like- Check-ins. Hey, check, look, 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 this guy's so funny. Look at this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when she, when she did that and she brought that up the way she did, I was like, oh, fuck, that's fucking tight, you know? And I'm like in my fucking mid thirties at this point and I'm learning about deepening relationships because I, I know how to deepen a relationship when it comes to like an intimate relationship. I know how to uh, how to strengthen the relationship when it comes to a family relationship because I've consciously worked towards that and I've consciously consciously worked towards us. But when it came to a friend, I just thought like, I mean, friends just come and go. You know, I thought that's just what happened. But when she brought it up that like, hey, like, I don't like this. We're supposed to be tight and we're not tight. What's going on? Like basically is what she's saying, you know, that I was like, oh, fuck, this is fucking tight. Like, that's what people do. Like, you know, if something just doesn't feel right and you would think, right, that's like, duh, like, yeah. why, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Um, but I think for me, it was more like, OK, I, I, I again, I justified it in my head as like, oh, we are different people, which is which is cool. But I'm like, oh, we are different. We view things differently. Maybe that that, that she's hanging out with those girls and stuff that suits her more than her hanging out with me. Yeah. But I think true best friends, you embrace the differences. Yeah. So yeah. you would go to her more girly stuff and yeah. then she would go to your whatever. Which I have no problem with and I embrace that part. But I, yeah. think, I think I felt that I was burdening her by her knowing that I'm not into that girly stuff. I don't even have to say it because we're friends. We just know who we are and yeah, yeah, who, yeah. who each other are. So I never wanted her to feel like, oh man, Jill's not going to like this shit. I don't even want to bug her with it. You know, like, yeah. so I'm inconveniencing her in that way, making her feel bad. Yeah. Like, fuck, I want to invite her, but I know it's going to bother her because she doesn't even give a fuck about this, you know, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Um. You know who's good? That's a guy that's like that. David. David. Yeah. And so like me and Joe kind of experienced the same thing that you and Tiff did where uh, this was maybe two years back, Joe started training with Noah, like a lot, right? And he was doing a lot of more stunt stuff, choreography, traditional martial arts stuff, which at that time I didn't really have that much of an interest in yeah. because I really like just like real fighting stuff. Yeah. And Joe would go to Noah's camps. They would climb, go hiking, do forms like on mountains and stuff. Yeah. And they would do a lot of that, right? And David is like me. He loves UFC, loves MMA. He likes the more combative martial arts rather than the traditional one. Yeah. But to 
maintain the relationship with Joe on one of the camps with Noah, he went to the camp. Yeah. And it's a two day, three day thing. And he went the whole time to support Joe. Yeah. To do what Joe loves. And he doesn't even give a shit about it. And he's doing and participating the whole way through. Yeah. And when I heard about that, I'm like, fuck, David's actually a better friend than I am. Because for me, kind of like you, I was like, oh, this is his thing. Yeah. Let me let him breathe. Yeah. Let him let it do this thing versus like maybe even for like uh, like scuba. I did it with my buddy Ryan. Yeah, but maybe he would have just felt really cool. I didn't even put the invite out. I just go. Eh, that's oh, not his I, thing. Yeah, I don't know if that's his thing or not. Yeah. But I don't even put the in, like I don't even I didn't even give him a chance to be a good best friend. And I didn't even give myself a chance to be a good best friend by going, Hey, you want me to go with you with to the Noah thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good observation. And yeah, David's a really good friend. Like David's another prime example of someone that has friends for fucking ever. He'll do he'll do hella shit that has nothing to do with him. Yeah. But he'll just go and just do it. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. Okay. So our final I'm going to pause here. Sorry. Okay. This is our final sponsor uh, and one of my favorites. Uh, this is Third Love. So ladies, this one's specifically for you and gentlemen out there who want to support your lady and having that perfect bra. I highly recommend um, Third Love. Sorry, I'm trying to get into my phone here. Um, yes. So I've been using Third Love once uh, they, they talked about sponsoring this program. I'm like, okay, well, anytime we have any sort of interest in sponsorships, I'm always, and you too, we're always like, okay, well, let's see it first. Let's make sure that we like it and we stand behind it uh, before we pitch it to you guys because we don't want to just give you guys trash. Uh, so when Third Love uh, approached us, Bart was like, yeah, I'm down to try the bra. I'm just kidding. But he probably would be down to try the bra. I would. Um, so yeah, I was like, okay, you know, shoot it over. I want to check it out. And it was dope because I took this, uh, it's called a fit finder quiz. And uh, you take the 60 second quiz and you look at all these different t- types of boobs. There's like, I don't know how many types of boobs. So I'm an asymmetrical. I want to take this quiz. Are they're drawings. Boobs? They're God not, they're not real picture. It. They're not real picture boobs. They're drawing. They're so cute. I don't want to take this quiz anymore. Uh, yeah. And it takes 60 seconds. I was already pretty cynical. I was like, all right, yeah, right. This test is really going to figure out my perfect bra size. Cause I've till this, I mean, before taking that quiz, I fucking went to Victoria's Secret. I went, I have Calvin Klein bras. Like I have really pretty decent bras. None of them would fit me per- perfectly. Like they were either too big or too small. And then once I got a boob job, forget it, dude. It threw me off even more. And because I'm asymmetrical, meaning like one of my boobs is not like the other. <laughs> That's funny because it's the song out there. Anyway, um, yeah, it just made it even more complicated. And I would, I remember reading comments like on our YouTube videos, like, damn, Gio needs to find a better bra. And I'm like, what? How do they know? Like see through your clothes? Well, I mean, if you're wearing a fitted shirt, yeah, you can see that it's kind of spilling out or whatever. Uh, and for me, I'm like, I try looking for a better bra. I don't even know how to do this shit. Yeah. But with, um, with uh, Third Love, it was literally that fast. So 60 seconds, I look at pictures, which I love because don't give me words. I ain't trying to do all that. And I'm trying to think about it. Um, I get to do it in the privacy of my own home. I don't have to go to the store. I don't have to go to the mall or whatever, find parking, get out, go in. Yeah. I just, I'm not all about that. So I get to do it in my own home on my computer. Six seconds later, they gives you recommendations. It says, this is your bra size. This is what we recommend. I went with one, th- one of the recommendations, which is the t-shirt bra. Um, and it is my favorite bra of all time. I got two of the exact same one in different colors because of course we like to wear white or we like to wear black and you're not gonna wear a black bra uh, with a white shirt unless you want it to be intentional, but for the most part- Unless you know it's gonna rain. <laughs> right, or you're gonna have a, a water balloon fight or something. Exactly. Um, so yes, so they have the perfect fit. So Third Love uses data points generated by millions, y'all, millions of women. So I'm not talking about just a hundred women and then they're like, we we started a hundred women. No, like millions of women who have taken their Fit Finder quiz to design bras with uh, breast size and shape in mind for the perfect fit and a premium feel. Also, uh, they don't charge you more because you so happen to have a bigger bra size like they're not going to charge you extra because you're like in the eye for the extra material yeah uh so there's more sizes than most other brands third love offers more than 70 sizes y'all they even uh have half sizes so that's amazing and the convenience of like i just mentioned you get to do it in the privacy of your own home um you get to do that online and uh, it's a hundred percent fit guarantee. So every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it 
and then you get to put it to the test. If it's not for you, send it back and you try a different size. Like you really have nothing to lose. And y'all, ladies, think about all the bras that you have in your in your drawer, wherever you put your draws, draws your bras, um, and and you ask put your yourself. Bras with your draws, don't you, you can, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, and ask yourself if these even fit you correctly. Cause I know I have like five right now that I'm like, why do I even have these still? Like I need to throw this shit away because none of them fit me properly. It's Cause you're a pack rat. I'm not a pack rat, don't say that. Um, yeah, so Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they are offering our listeners 15% off of your first order. Dude, you guys have to do that. So go to thirdlove.com slash bill, B-E-A-W now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. So that's thirdlove.com slash bill, B-E-A-W for 15% off. Don't miss out on it, y'all. I always get so hyped when I talk about them because I'm telling you, my bras were fucked up. Uh, so what were we saying? David, yes, he's a good, he's a good dude. Yeah, and so. he's down to do things that don't uh, aren't necessarily his interest, but yeah. he's doing it as the true homie to support. Yeah, which I think is fucking awesome. Yeah, and I agree with that. And I'm like, like I'm so down to do it, but I think because I'm so vocal about shit that I don't want to do, because my friends are good friends, they're like, we don't even want to bother her with that shit. What do you think about going above and beyond that? So countering the counter, if you know that they're not going to bother you, you. Invite, invite yourself, yourself anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's I'm sure what a good they will friend love is. Love it if you came, you know. Yeah, that's a that's what a good friend would do. Yeah. Um and yeah, I, I think I think um so I I guess going back to the original 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 of how you were saying that people tell you that people are more on the recluse. I don't think that really has anything to I mean I'm sure there's a factor in there that um that going online does things to people or whatever. I just think now there's just a different social kind of currency that's just being exchanged, you know? Like it's not happening the way it was when we were younger. Um, and I feel like, uh, like yeah, you, you should meet in person at one point or whatever, but I think how you met and how all that happened, I don't really think it matters. I think it matters like how you continue to like- To maintain it. Yeah, to maintain it and to nurture it and, and like anything else. like. You're not going to, you know, if you're in a relationship, hopefully you're not going to be like, ah, okay, well, this person's not for me. Moving on to the next one. Cause then you're never really going to have a successful relationship with the, with the partner. Right. Yeah. So why wouldn't, at least for me, I'm, I'm saying this out loud now. Cause I'm like, duh. Like, why wouldn't I see it the same way? The, um, they did this recent study where I think they rated like kids 10 years ago, like junior high kids, uh, how many best friends they had. And it was like 1.1 or something. And then now they rated it with social media. And then now I think the average best friend is 1.5. How, where, where's the point one and point five? What does that mean? Oh, cause it's like, uh, you know, when you do an average, you're not going to get a perfect number. Cause some guys might have four best friends. Some people might have zero best friends and you, you do the average of it. But the point is that they grew by half a best friend because of social media, because people can stay that much more interconnected. Yeah. Which yeah. is pretty cool. Like they're actually talking about sincere real best friends that they consider themselves best friends. That's tight. And because of social media, I guess now you're able to maintain two relationships rather than just one because you don't have to physically be there. Yeah. Um, they, they're able to be, to make meaningful relationships and have more of them. Yeah. So maybe we suck at being best friends, but I think we're pretty good at being friends. Right? I don't even think we're good at being friends. Like, Oh, damn, let's hear about that. The minute like I hear someone's moving, I'm go. Good luck. Oh, uh, you're fucked up. I'm like, up. that shit's tough. Oh, you're fucked up. I don't say good luck. I'm like, well, let us know if you need Bart's truck. Let me know if you need anything. <laughs> let me know if you need Bart's truck. Let me know if you need Bart's help. Let me know if he needs Bart's water. If you want Bart, Bart to buy you lunch. All right, you're right. You're right. Okay, I get it. We, I suck. I should be more like, hey, when do you want me to go? Exactly. That's a yeah. friend. A friend doesn't go, God let damn. me know. Because let me know, I feel like, is the passive cop out. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Let me know. It's like, oh, when are you moving? I'll be there. Yeah, and then your friends are going to be like, well, I don't want to bug you. Like, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. Damn, we suck. We do. Suck. How many times have we, like, put something out there, like, uh, like even, like, in a corporate meeting in, in, in our companies, and we're like, let me know if you have any questions. No one has questions when you ask, let me know if you have any questions. It's almost like that's a waste of space. But if you're like, hey, I saw your eyebrows crinkle when I was talking about this. Can you, what, it, what what's the question that you do have? Then they'll yeah. oh, yeah, I didn't really understand that. I think we got to be more active into it if you want to like if you want to maintain these relationships yeah fuck 
how does David do it? How does Tiff do it? David, I think he's all up in the mix. Yeah. Like he just randomly go, hey, uh, I want to cook you guys sundubu because I know you guys love sundubu. Um, when do you want to do it? Oh, he never texts me that. Maybe you have a... But he came over, right? He came yeah, over he and, he co- and he cooked sundubu yeah, for, for us. for no reason. For no fucking reason. So that's yeah. dope. And then also David, he's always like he invited... Uh, because of him, I had started training martial arts with him too. And he's always inviting you, always inviting Tiff, Nikki. He's inviting everyone to come. He's yeah. always like, hey, he's always putting out a and hand. And Tiff is tight because uh, she will be hanging out or whatever. Yeah. And then she's talking to Casey. She's like, yeah, I'm going to go hang out with <laughs> I'm going to go be at Barton Gio's house. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know that. That's tight. And I love that. Talking to who? We should be telling Casey or, or I don't know. But she's already like at our house. Like she's just like, oh, I'm going to go with them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's fucking tight. Yeah, we have an open door policy, but I don't think we make it like... I think we tiptoe a lot in this group now. You know, I think yeah. so we got older. We don't just show up to yeah, people's we don't, houses. Yeah, because we were like, oh, we don't want to inconvenience people. Because I think, because we would feel inconvenienced. Yeah. I think we don't want anyone to feel that. So it's projection. It is. And then I think, I don't, and I think without the burdening, you can't deepen friendships. I think the reason our marriage gets deepened because because we burden each other. Oh you God, know? you burden the fuck out of and me. And you burden the fuck out of me. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it felt like really good saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think we got to burden other people too. I love these podcasts because they're like fucking very therapeutic for me. Really? Cause we get, yeah, because we get to talk this shit out and then you'll call me out on some shit. Like you're very direct. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, damn, that's so true. I do do that. Yeah. Should we, after this podcast, literally like put out a group text? Hey, if anyone needs help moving, me and Drew are there. We should do that. Oh, that's perfect timing because we're going to start moving and hopefully they go, <laughs> you know what? I think you guys are moving first. You guys want us to, and we're like, fuck yeah, got them. I, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to move, but um, yeah, I definitely think like we need to start getting out there more because I know when I was trying to uh, fix or mend my relationships with my family members, Yeah, I was going out of my way like crazy Cause I'm like, okay, they're not going to do anything about it. Let me go to them. Let me go to their house for no fucking reason. Yeah. Let me show up at this thing because I know that they're going to want me to be there or whatever. Yeah. And that started really making an impact on them. Yeah. You and your brother got way better. Oh dude, it was really bad. But yeah, we're like super tight now. We're super tight. Like I feel like I can tell him anything. Do you think you can do that with your sisters? Fuck no. (laughs) Why? (laughs) That's another, that's a whole nother podcast, baby. Oh, fine. Yeah, that's a whole other podcast. Maybe that's something I got to work on. Maybe I just got to be like, this is how they are. I don't agree with it, but they're family at the end of the day. Um, and I do want them around somewhat. Um, so I should probably try to mend that too. I need to do that with my parents, actually. Like my mom, you know, like I, I don't want to burden her with anything. And I don't even want her to burden anything with me. So anything I could solve with money, I'm like, let me try to do that. So like... Instead of when she goes, hey, I'm gonna need, I need someone to pick me up from the airport. I was like, oh yeah, I'll send you Uber any day, anytime. So I can leave myself out of it. I'm not trying to spend time with her. <laughs> that was the, I think by you <laughs> resisting the yawn, you made an uglier face. You should have just yawned. <laughs> if you would have just yawned like a normal person, like <sighs> I would have recognized what kind of face that was. But you're like. <sighs> <laughs> I was trying not to be rude. Fuck. Just was, yawn next time. All right, I was trying not to burden you. Damn. Because you look like a tomato that was trying not to explode. <laughs> <laughs> that already hit the floor. It's like, just explode. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> what an ass. Yeah, I think I should just put myself out there. And even with my parents, like, because my dad knows not to burden me too. And then maybe it's because of like this projection I put out there. So when my dad needs help, he tries to find other people. Like even with, uh, he'll like, you know, back in the day, you know how he used to come over all the time because he needs English help. Can you read this? Can you read this? And I'm like, yo, can I just connect you with my lawyer? He's going to know English way better. He's going to understand these government forms way better. And you guys talk it out. But by doing that, I don't deepen any relationship with my parents either. Yeah. So just by avoiding burden and, and I'm just... Now my relationship with my dad is just through Taika and through and with my mom it's through I don't know what it's through. Yeah. But I think I should be applying it too and just allow the burden to happen. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Letting letting yourself be burdened. Yeah. Yeah, cuz there's like a an aspect of being vulnerable for that. Like your mom's going to move soon. Maybe you yeah. can help your mom. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good with my mom. I see her every day. Uh, 
that and because I'm just always trying to weasel my way into her life. Yeah. Because I think I get a lot of this of who I am from her, specifically from her. And um, because I can recognize things that I don't like that she does, I recognize those things in myself. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to be like that because I hate it. So I try to change it. So so the whole inconvenience and that whole thing, I'm always like, I'm going to butt into your fucking life because you're always like, oh, I don't want to bother. I don't want to bother. And I'm like, bother me. That's what the, and this is crazy because I'm like, that's what, that's what a relationship is. Like you should be bought, quote unquote, bothering, bothering each me. other. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not a fucking stranger. Like you're my mom. I, you should be leaning on me for these things. Yeah. You shouldn't be going to strangers for that. Yeah. Like, um. Uh, so she, she has two phones right now. Right. So I got her a phone because she had a fucking flip phone for the longest time. So I'm like, okay, we're not going to like, I want you to learn. I want you to be more technologically advanced. I want you to learn how to text. Um, I want you to be able to use and, and send and read, uh, emails. So I got her an iPhone and I was like, okay, this is this year for the work that you're going to have to do with us. Cause she started off like as my assistant. Yeah. Now she's just like my lifeline. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so I'm gonna get you this phone because this is what the 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 job is gonna need for it, and the because I'm like your flip phone is phone is not capable of doing any of that stuff. So um, she was under my brother's plan for that. So that plan, I guess something happened to it that they switched plans, and my brother was like, okay, um, uh, we have to get rid of this line, and he got her a new phone, which is also an iPhone. So now she has two iPhones, right? Oh, sick. <laughs> I know she's like a fucking drug dealer. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, you know what, mom, you're so attached because another thing she was doing was instead of transferring all her contacts from her old phone and moving it into the iPhone, I got her. She was like, no, this is a work phone. I don't want anyone to reach me here. Um, I want to separate the two. And I'm like, wait, why? Like, I've got it for you. It's yours. It's not a work phone. It's your phone. I yeah. gave it to you. And she's yeah. like, no, as soon as we're not working together anymore, like I'm giving it back and you can give it to your new assistant or whatever, whoever, whomever you hire. And That's I'm like, so what? cold. I'm like, what the fuck? That's fucking weird. Yeah. You're my mom, you freaking crazy. Yeah, and I say shit like that to her all the time. And I'm and she'll just say shit like, or or if she's gonna like she wants to get a candy from our pantry, she's like, Hey, is it okay if I get one? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you're my mom, you're so weird. Yeah. Like, just let's do it. You know, or she's like, Hey, do you think you have time to order something for me online? And I'm like, Of course I do. What are you talking about? So yeah, like I don't know why I didn't recognize this in like friendships <laughs> what about um on the flip side though like i just to say no <laughs> uh, flip side <laughs> um like my parents right do you would you, you want your mom to be a little more like my parents where they just come in and they just no. straight up burden no they just come in and just straight up buy emperor's outfits for the whole family and they expect you to take a family picture right then and there and drop everything you're doing and do no right that's there. too extreme i i like i like so you want your mom to be somewhere in between her and where my parents yeah, are? Yeah, so our your parents and my mom, they're on complete polar opposite sides. My mom is so like, I don't want to inconvenience anyone. I'm going to treat you like a stranger because like you respect strangers for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and you always show them like your best side. Yeah. Because first impressions. And then your parents are like, I don't give a fuck what you're doing. I don't give a shit if you're getting a heart transplant right now. I want you to wear these fucking emperor outfits. Take a picture. Yeah. Like that's too extreme for me yes i would want my mom in the middle to be like hey i need you to do this i'm like hell yeah fuck yeah you know yeah but yeah we but don't which, have one, that. which one would you rather have you'd rather have the less burdening and more stranger um, than the full burden i think because i'm just so used to that now and that's who i am i th i would prefer the less burden one yeah because the other one is just Maybe because I know your parents. Yeah. The other one is just too hardcore. It man. is really hardcore. But that could also be said why their relationship with their siblings are so tight. Is it that tight? They're really tight. Yeah. Like, oh. my, like uh, f for mo a lot of siblings, like money is like a very touchy subject. Yeah. Hey, can I borrow 40 G's or whatever? It's like, oh, I don't know. My family's this. I got to worry about my family. But on um, both sides, like they, they're down. Like um, my dad, when I pitched him the Barba Brigade idea five, six years ago, I'm like, hey, do you have any money? I want to start this gym. And then he talked to the aunt that we met in San Francisco. And there you go again. <laughs> Fuck, I did it again. Sorry, I'm trying not to yawn in your you face. Just, you just ate something sour. Just God like, damn it. It was like a reverse sour. Like, 
I'm just trying not to yawn. It looked like someone. I'm so jet lagged right now, and I haven't slept. It looked like someone days. ate a lemon head and then played it back backwards. <laughs> um, yeah, and then she just let our let us borrow 50 G's. Yeah, you know, like that's and then they burden. They talk on the phone every day. My mom and her siblings are super tight like that. And I don't know if your mom's tight with her family like that, but no. I guess that comes with the territory. Like the She's tighter not. you want to be the more in each other's face you got to be, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But you, so you would prefer to not be so tight and be less in each other's face? Um, fuck. I don't know. I think I'm just so used to that, that yeah, I'm naturally going to be more inclined to be like, yeah, I don't want that burden. But I think because I'm valuing the burden part of it, but if I valued more, um, the connection part of it, then I'd be like, no, I think I want to be burdened more. Yeah. Cause I think if I was hanging out with my mom every day, I'd probably start getting mad at her and start yelling at her all the time. Cause I think because it's only like a day at a time, I can just roast her and be funny about it. And then, uh, but I think if it was constant, like, Hey, you gotta do this, do it's that, do rough. this. I'm like, cause I, we were in Taiwan just hanging out with my other family that I haven't seen in a long time. And the minute she found out we were like going to this restaurant, she was like, hey, text me a picture. Text me that picture. I'm like, God damn, is my mom here right now? Like she's so involved and she's in another, I can't even have time to bond with my uncle because- She's she, side busted. She's so side busted from the States and she's not even the same time zone. We're, we're eating lunch and she's, it's like 6 a.m. or something and she's like uh, super involved. Yeah. But if we viewed it from a non-burdening lens, that's like, oh, look how tight this family that is. pretty is. tight. That's true. If you take out the burden part of it, you're yeah. like, oh, damn, she got up early just so we can all be connected. Yeah. It's that's all about, pretty tight. That's really tight. Oh, you're a dick. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's really cool because like, it felt like she was there. It did feel like she was there. The, w yeah, it's hard, dude. I mean, that's, that's how strong connections are made. And maybe that's why we suck at it. And because we view it as burden and we don't want it, that's why we have such little friends yeah speaking of simon sinek right start with why like why are we like this why are we like this yeah this is why we can't have nice things yeah our friend circle is really small like yeah we we have jess joe david all that but like and we have each other's back no matter what like i know if i have an emergency regardless if it's like someone has to take care of taika for a month or i need this much money or uh, we got to go and do some shady shit. Like, I know everyone would be down. Like, I know 100% all of our friends would be down. Yeah. Um, but, but it happened because we were all in the same hustle, struggling. We all saw each other's highs and lows because we were just working so close together. Would this have been the case if we weren't working together? Probably, like, it probably wouldn't be like this. Yeah. Like, uh, Jess and Tiff are really tight because... Uh, since they work on JK News together a lot, they were able to share a lot of parts of their relationship and they've helped each other deal with that. Yeah. They burden each other with that stuff, you know? Yeah. Damn, we need to get burdened more. Would you be down to have my mom move in for like a week? No. Or not getting burdened? No, I can't do it. <laughs> Your mom is too much, babe. I love her. Our relationship is not going to get any better. I love her, but I mean, you're, you're in your mom's relationship will probably get really, really good. Or maybe not. Who knows? Um, but our relationship would fucking suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Because we wouldn't be, because your mom is so, um, she's kind of overbearing. <laughs> she's very overbearing. And she doesn't know, like, we're adults now. It's just a different, like, it's just Eastern and Western There we go with the thinking. Asian stuff, yeah. I didn't say Asian stuff. I just said Eastern and Western. East what? East Mississippi? Uh, East, East as in Asia. <laughs> Asian thinking, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... Hey, we all took anthropology, all right? We know Did that. We? I never took anthropology. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, well, I took a fun class. Yeah, okay. I took anthropology. Yeah, and I mean, it's classified that way just because the values and the ideals and all that, it's it's different from yeah. the East and the West. And yeah. it's not just an Asian thing. It's just on the East Coast. I mean, on the East part of the world. <laughs> Where is it? Where is this 10 finger <laughs> East? <laughs> Can you point me to the East? <laughs> that way, yeah. You just point in 10 I different look directions. Cute. Yeah. Babe, I'm hella cute. Yeah, you're really cute. Um. Yeah, so we just value different things. Whereas when I was raised, it's like once you're an adult and you have your family, then then you're calling the shots and now you can sit at the big boy table and now we can all have philosophical conversations and everyone's going to respect everyone's opinion and stuff. With yours, it's more like, well, these are the elders. Who cares if they're right or they're wrong? They say whatever they want to say, you listen. 
And that's just, I, it's just different for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really weird. Uh, what's weird? The Eastern style. Cause I, I grew up Western. So I, I understand and I have a lot of Eastern values, but like, like for example, like the, like, um, in a lot of Western, when you buy your house, that's your house and your parents are now your guest. And yeah. Most, most people, they try to abide by the new, uh, guests rules. Right. And they go, yeah. Oh, cool. So the dog lives inside. Okay. That's cool. Uh, um, mine, my, the minute my dad sees that the dogs live inside, he goes, why are the dogs living inside? It should be outside. And I'm like, well, cause it's my motherfucking house that I bought with my own motherfucking money, motherfucker. And then for him, he constantly has something to say about it. And I'm like, no, I'm going to have the dogs live inside now. Yeah. And, or if like my mom came and she saw the fridge was organized a certain way, why, why you organize that? That's so stupid. You should put this over here. And I'm like, well, because this is the way I live. And because of that, I think it's very over, overbearing. Yeah. So like, how do I improve that connection with my mom, also with you, but without yeah. burdening? Because I can also see because Asian is such a collective mindset. Yeah. The minute she comes into the house, like one thing I really love about your mom, when she comes into our house, it's still, I'm in your house. You guys got to focus on your marriage. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, it's like two plus one. Yeah. When my mom comes into our house, it's, it's three now. What's this dynamic? It's three. And because it's so collectivist, it almost... It's it's almost not like here's a marriage and I'm the mom. It's just we're just three people in the same family and it's interchangeable titles. We might as well be cousins, aunts, uncles, doesn't really matter, brothers, sisters. We're just three people in the same family. That's not how I see how she is. Oh, really? How do you see it? <clears throat> when she comes in and then the dynamic definitely changes, but it's the dynamic is I'm the eldest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so true. it's it's a it's a top down thing. Yeah, it's on we're the, not we're not all on the same level. That's true. It's one elder and then two people that got a follower. Yeah. So d d there's no like back and forth. It's like. I'm cold. Oh shit. Okay. We got to turn off the AC. It's not like I'm cold. Hey, um, go, is stand anyone else? go stand in the sun. Is anyone else cold? Go stand in the or sun. Or is it mom? just me? Like, it's not a, it's not like a, yeah, we're not all in the same playing field. Um, so I guess to answer your question, I think a lot of it has to do with perspective. You know, there has to be a, a huge paradigm shift for you. Um, where you can see everything as, I mean, for you, there's, there's baggage, obviously, as to why you're feeling the way you do. And you're so quick to be like, this is a fucking inconvenience. I fucking hate this because you've lived with it for, I don't know how many years. And like, you just fucking hate it. Right. Um, and you have all these bad, like this bad taste in your mouth from it. So you're just quick to just, your fuse is just shorter and shorter every time they're around. But if you can just switch it and see it for the intent, you know, like, like, try to remove all the fucking words that they use and, and remove your own negative feelings from it. And yeah. then you see it for what it really is. And you'll just be like, Oh man, that's kind of touching. You know, like my dad cares about the dogs not ruining my floor and you know, they step in shit and now you're bringing this shit into your house. You know, yeah, that's, that's, true. that's what he's thinking about. But you're just saying it as like, Oh fuck another shit you want to control. Like I yeah. can't even have yeah, my yeah, own yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah. I paid for this shit. Yeah. That's why I'm paying for it. So I can make my own decision. Yeah. Yeah. So we should just have my mom move in for a week and then we just try to change our perspective. Well, where, why, why, why am I dragged into this? Because you're my wife and I need your backup. <laughs> I can't do it by myself. Yeah. And why does I, your mom and, need to move in and, though? And can, and can, I want, I, can I get that clarified? Why does your mom need to, move, need to move in? She doesn't need to move in. But for me, I just like to know, I like to, to always push to the extreme to know that we can do that. Because if we can do that, we can do anything else. Of course, we can do anything. We can't. We really can't. What do you mean? We can't do anything. No one can do anything. It's tough doing anything. <laughs> we can do it. How? She moves in for a week. What do you mean? So you we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're doing it? No, I'm just saying we can do it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Talking about doing something is way easier than really doing it. I mean, my relationship with her is really good. <laughs> <laughs> my relationship with her is really good. I mean, would you be down to have her live with us for a week? And then we just really try to like make our relationship really good and we try to flip our perspective and see if we can deepen the relationship. I can flip the perspective really fucking quick because really? I don't have that baggage that you have. Then what are you worried about? How what are you worried about her affecting our marriage? Oh no, I, I was painting the extreme as well. Yeah. Because you were just saying if she lived with us. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just painting the extreme picture of how that would happen. Because from a good son's point of view, if we asked her to live with us for a week, I think she would feel like she won the lottery. I think she would be so fucking happy. She'd be able to play with Taika and uh, she will be able to relax and hang out. And then she might, I think it'll be, we'll, we'll achieve a level of closeness that we haven't had in a long time. 
Yeah. And just talking about it more makes me feel like the more I talk about it, the more I should do it. I think the first thing that should happen, not to like hop out of anything, but I think the first thing that should happen is you two should probably take a trip together the same way I said you and your dad should take a trip together. Oh, uh, specifically road trip or like a train trip, like yeah. something that's a long amount of time in a in an enclosed space where you're forced to be together. That's a good one too. And it's a neutral and it's a neutral space, you know. Yeah, I think that's easier though. Like I need to be put in a like I think if I because I've done road trips with my mom, they're actually really awesome because there's two people in a car, and then we just talk, and then and me and my mom can talk for a long time. Um, but I, so I don't think that's going to deepen it. Maybe me and my dad, cause we actually don't talk. Yeah. But I think with me and my mom, I think we need to put it in a situation where she can have her shit to say. And I have to constantly flip my perspective. Mm, I see. If, if, if we were in a Ferrari and I'm driving hella fast and my mom's constantly yelling at me to slow down, then I think that would exercise that. But I think in the car, like we just become friends. Like we're actually pretty cool like that. Oh, it's tight. Like ever since we're, uh, ever since I was a kid, like whenever we went to go eat, all the Chinese restaurants are always like, "Oh, you guys are like brothers and sisters. You guys can talk so easily." Yeah, that's really tight. I guess I don't get to see that stuff because um, her English isn't that good, so it's a lot of translation and it's a lot of your baggage translated to me. Yeah. So I don't. So I I don't really have that yeah, type of. A, I gotta apologize for that. It's. I mean, it's not your fault, but. Um, so I, I only see her and your dad from the lens that you paint them to be. Yeah. The minute they do something or I'm like, ah, I just fucking complain about this bullshit again. Yeah. That's why I always try to like, like, even though I don't know what's going on, I really try to be in the conversation and I'm trying to put context clues together and I'm like, oh, I think this is what they're talking about. So I try to like get involved in it. But then sometimes I'm, I'm like completely lost and I'm like, what, what happened? What, what just happened there? And you're like, ah, oh, and you give me three words and I'm like, Okay. It's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So for my dad, um, for his birthday, you think I should do a road trip, just me and him? Yeah, because I think you wanted to buy him something expensive or some shit. Yeah. I, I forgot, but um, I was like, wait, why would you do that? Like, just knowing my parents and how they are, I feel like your parents are pretty similar. Yeah, memories are more important. Yeah, it's like they can get their own shit. Like, your dad has, not to say that he's fucking rich, but he's not struggling by any means. Like, yeah. if he really wanted that, he would get it. True. You know, because he's not supporting anyone. Yeah. So he can get that for himself. True. Um, so it's like, what what would be better? It's like memories, you know? Like I see that now with my mom where she's kind of just giving away all her material possessions because she's yeah. like, I don't have that much time on this earth. It sounds depressing as fuck, but it's one of the realest things she said where she's like, I, like, I don't need more shit. Like, I just want, you know, I just want to bond here. Like my mom was always against taking pictures and I fucking hated it. Like, she, the way she is when she doesn't want to be in a vlog that's how <laughs> yeah. she was with family photos oh my god for family photos Your mom has like, problems right obviously <laughs> um but she started loosening up and started taking more pictures thank god yeah because it's like like damn homie you ain't gonna be on this earth forever like i want to i want to share this you know taika's gonna probably want to share this with his kids kids you know like, who's your grandma? Like, what? Well, she took care of me. But it's like, well, I don't have any pictures of her. Like, fucking, I can't show you shit. But luckily, fucking, she changed that. Yeah. So for um, the trip with my dad, you don't think you and Taika should come? We can. But it's going to affect it. For sure. Because now there's a distraction. Yeah, So if you true. guys are trying, if you guys are trying to work on your guys' bond. Yeah. And really deepen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you turning around and, and having to translate that puts a pause in the conversation or yeah, in the thought that's you know true, yeah or if there's taika around now the conversation is just centered around taika yeah so we can do that but if the goal if the why uh is is um for you to connect with him yeah i want to connect i'm connecting with him a long time yeah then it should be that way yeah because I, I don't think it's sh i should accept just the fact that oh cool me and my, my dad and taika has a great relationship and just let it be at that i think him should, and taika have a great relationship yeah i think it should be we all three should have a good one and then we can take that really cool picture of us three naked together mm. you know what i'm talking about they always have like those like multi-generational naked father pictures no i haven't seen the naked ones but i have seen the multi-generational ones with clothes Oh, I think the the naked one makes more of an impact. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's what you think, I guess. Yeah. And so with my mom, you're down to have her live with us for a week? I mean, we we lived, we kind of lived with her in San Francisco for like three days. Yeah, but that's all and on the that move. And that wasn't bad. And it's on the move. 
I, I think like honestly, if we once we move, and uh, with her fake heart problems, I think I mean, like <laughs> I having mean, like the good oxygen. And her being around us, I think that'd be cool. And it's a big open airy space. I think yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. And then I'll just try to be a better translator and not insert my baggage. Because my mom's actually a really sweet person. Yeah, she is. But I just have so much baggage and I'm tired of hearing the fucking flapper gums <laughs> that when I translate it, I always like insert my own bias into it. And for I sh- sure. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, I get it all the time. I get it all the time. And I guess for us, I guess ending it here, um, we just have to put ourselves out there a little bit more. Yeah. With our own friends. And just check in randomly. Yeah. I do that with Tiff now. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about you. What are you up to? Or, hey, I fucking miss you. Where are you at? Yeah. Yeah. Or how's everything? Because we don't really get to see each other that much anymore. Yeah. Me, me, me Joe, and David talk a lot more now. Oh, good. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Like, I'll text, he'll text me random funny things. And yeah. I'll text him random funny things. And then David, we're always just talking about MMA all the time. So there's always constant talking. That's cute. Yeah. So when you see me and him like shadow boxing out in public, Please don't cock block. We're, we're really having a uh, uh, building a camaraderie. Oh, you're disgusting. Yeah, I mean, you were just doing it in a country that was really, really strict on all that stuff, and you're a foreigner yeah. in Japan doing it. And like, they're pretty people, big on karate and judo. And they're and they're yeah, it's the right time, right fucking place. Yeah. Uh, and they're all rushing, trying to get to the subway so well, that the they're place not is late. Correct, because that's where it was invented. Uh, no, the place isn't correct. The country that it is, it's correct. You're exactly, in the right country, not exactly. the right place, though. Okay. Anyway. But yeah. Damn. What an eye-opening episode. Yeah. Well, I hope we were able to help you guys through we opened, our own. We open our own eyes. Yeah. Through us opening it up. We hope we helped you guys with this. Yeah. So yeah, that concludes today's podcast. Thank you again to Ship Station, Audible, and Third Love. And, and last, Barbell Brigade. But not least, yes, our very own brand, Barbell Brigade. Um, you can find us in LA because we do own a brick and mortar gym. So if you're ever out here, if you live here and you want some strength and conditioning uh, equipment, come check us out. It's fucking awesome. And it's so friendly. Yeah. It looks hardcore, but it's like the friendliest people that you'll ever meet. And you might find the love of your life there or your best friend. Um, True. check that out. And, uh, we also have an apparel line with the coolest, sickest graphics ever with our motto dominate humbly, which basically means just do a better version of yourself. Uh, put your head down, keep working hard and you're never above anyone else, but you're fucking killing the game. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and watching and hope to see you guys next time. Adios. Bye.